Empowerment Technologies, Quarter 1, Module 1, and our topic for today is Information and Communication Technology. So first, let us discuss these guided questions. Answer the following questions honestly. First, how many times have you checked your phone this morning? How many status updates have you posted in Facebook today? Did you use the internet for an hour after you woke up this morning? Do you follow a celebrity via his or her social media account? So please comment your answers on our chat box or in the comment section. If you happen to be guilty as charged in most of these questions, chances are you are a digital native. And chances are, from the moment you were born, you were surrounded by technology. You are surrounded by ICT. ICT or Information and Communication Technology, it deals with the use of different communication technologies such as mobile phones, internet, and etc. to locate, save, send, and edit information. Having a unified way to communicate is one of the goals of ICT. We spend less because of ICT. The World Wide Web or commonly referred to us as www, w3, triple w or simply the web is an interconnected system of public web pages accessible through the internet. It was invented by Sir Tim Berners-Lee in 1989. Web pages are what makes up the World Wide Web and it can either be static or dynamic. So what are these static or dynamic web pages? We have the Web 1.0 or the web pages are static and not interactive. You cannot post, comment, or create an account. These are the advantages of a static website. First, lower ones of cost. Next, faster loading than dynamic sites. Next, cheaper hosting required than dynamic sites. And developer independent. We also have these advantages of static websites. It might have higher maintenance costs if the content changes often. No user registration or advanced functionality usually connected with dynamic sites. Dependent on developer to make changes which can be a problem during public holidays or on short notice. So what are the examples of this static website? So let's choose the first link. So you may check the other link for you to visit. Alright, so this is the example of a static website. As you can see, this is more on read-only website, so more on text. There is no create button for you to log in your own account. So it is more on home page and profile of the website. So that's it for the static website or the web 1.0. Next is we have the web 2.0. So this term used to describe the present generation of the World Wide Web that concentrates on its capability of providing people the means to collaborate and share information online. So this is the website that we are actually using right now. So this is the second stage in the World Wide Web. It is also a dynamic website. The content of the website changes. They are also updating their website. It is interactive. The user may be able to comment or create user accounts. It enables an increased user participation in the web. So these are the examples of the web 2.0 and I know that you are already familiar with this website. We have Facebook, Google+, Twitter, Wikipedia, Google Maps, and more. 
So what are the features of this Web 2.0? First is the taxonomy. It allows the user to categorize and classify or arrange the information using freely chosen words. Example is tagging. The popular social network sites such as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and more use tags that starts with the pound sign. This is also referred to as as hashtag. So for this example, I use the hashtag DepEd. So all the posts with the hashtag DepEd appears. Okay, so for example, I have here the IBCTV13 or the Balik Escuela 2020. Ang hatid ng DepEd at IBC13 DepEd TV program schedule. So since they use the hashtag DepEd, definitely their public posts appear when I search the hashtag DepEd. Next is the rich user experience. So this content is dynamic and is responsive to users' input. An example would be a website that shows local content. In the case of social networking sites such as Facebook, when login on your account is used to modify what you see in their website. So, so for you to know the rich user experience, you need to log into your Facebook account and modify your timelines. So that is exactly what rich user experience is all about. Next is the user participation. The owner of the website is not the only one who is able to put content. Others are able to place a content of their own by means of comment, review, and evaluation. Some website allows readers to comment on an article, participate in a poll, or a review of a specific product, example, Amazon.com or the online stores. But for me, I used the example of my Facebook page, Teacher Zai, wherein there are lots of comments and reviews for my post. As you can see, it reached more than 30,000 shares and 22,000 reactions. It also have a 3,000 comments. Let's move on with the software as service. So user will be subscribed to a software only when needed rather than purchasing them. So for this example, I use the Google Docs. So this is a cheaper option if you do not always need to use a software. For instance, the Google Docs is a free web-based application that allows you as a user to create and edit word processing and spreadsheet documents online. So when you need a software like Word Processor or the Microsoft Word, you can purchase it for one time huge amount and install it in your computer and it is yours forever. So software as service allows you to rent a software for a minimal fee. We also have the mass participation. It is a diverse information sharing through universal web access. Since most users can use the internet, Web 2.0 content is based on peoples from various cultures. As you can see, there are lots of comments that is 3,200 comments on my example. So they are from various cultures, different locations. Let us now proceed with the web 3.0. It is also called as semantic web. So semantics meaning ability of web technologies to understand and interpret human generated content. The aim of web 3.0 is to have machine understand the user's preference to be able to deliver web content specifically targeting the users. The internet is able to predict the best possible answers to your questions by learning from your previous choices. So the good example of this is the Apple's Siri. For example, um, Siri, can you please search for the nearest fast food? Okay, so that is the example of Web 3.0. So now, let us discuss the trends in ICT. As the world of ICT continues to grow, the industry has focused on several innovations. So these innovations cater to the needs of the people that benefit most out of ICT. Whether it is for business or personal use, the trends are current front runners in the innovation of ICT. So first is convergence. Technological convergence is the combination of two or more different entities of technologies to create a new single device. 
For example, using a smartphone to create Word document that was previously can only be created using your desktop computer. Okay, since I know that most of us can access their Google Docs on their cell phone or install a Microsoft Word on their cell phone. So before we can only create our Word document using our desktop or laptop, but now we can use our smartphone as well. Next is the social media. It is a website, application, or online channel that enables web users to create, co-create, modify, and exchange users' generated content. Example of social media is the example of Web 2.0 which is the Facebook. So these are the types of social media that we have. First is social network. These are the sites that allows you to connect with other people with same interests or background. For example, is Facebook and Google+. We also have bookmarking sites. These are the sites that allows users to create, store, and manage links to various websites and resources and to tag. So the example is Istanbul Upon and the Pinterest. We also have social news. These are the sites that allow users to post their own news items or links to other news resources. So we have the Reddit or Dig. For media sharing website, it allows the users to upload and share media content like images, music, and video. So one good example of this is YouTube, also Instagram, and Flickr. For microblogging sites, these are sites that focus on short updates from the users. Those who are subscribed will receive updates. Example is Twitter. Next is blogs and forums. These are sites that allow users to post their content. Example is Blogger, WordPress, and Tumblr. Another trend in ICT is assistive media. It is a non-profit service designed to help people who have visual and reading impairments. A database of audio recording is used to read the user. You may visit the httpassistedmedia.org for several of their audio recordings. Also, we have the mobile technologies as one of the trends in ICT. The popularity of smartphone and tablets has taken a major rise over the years. This is largely because of the device capability to do tasks that were originally found in personal computer. These are the different types of mobile operating system. We have the iOS using Apple device. Also an Android, this is an open source OS. We have the BlackBerry OS, Windows Phone OS, Symbian, Web OS, and the Windows Mobile. So let's have our assessment for today. You can write T if the statement is correct and otherwise write F if the statement is incorrect. So first, web pages that are the same regardless of the users are referred to static. Next, blogging sites are sites that focus on short updates. Android is a mobile operating system for Apple device. Foxonomy deals with information tagging. ICT deals with the use of different technologies to work on a similar goal or task. So let's us check your assessment. Number one, true. Two, false. Three, false. Four, true. Five, false. Next, we have this activity differentiate web 1.0 web 2.0 and web 3.0 in your own words so these are the examples of answers for the web 1.0 we have static not interactive page view most read only for the web 2.0 we have sharing content community focus interactive advertising for the web 3.0 this is portable smart application and user engagement. So that is all for the Empowerment Technologies Quarter 1 Module 1 for the topic Information and Communication Technology.
thank you and see you on our next lesson.